Lesson 1.2, the measurement of segments and angles. In this lesson, we will find the length of segments and finding uh, the measurement of certain angles. In the first part here, we have a number line extending from negative 6 to 5, random letters chosen, and we're going to figure out the length of BE. Well, you can look at it and say, okay, well, from B to E goes from here here so we go one two three spaces so the length would be three at goes from here to here and so that has one two three spaces so it have a length of three and lastly would be ty well ty extends from here all the way to here which is one two three spaces once again if you have a number line drawn out and everything, that's great. You can count it. But what happens if it's from, you know, 100,000 to negative 25 million? You, you can't count how many spaces between that. So there's this rule. There's a rule, and the rule is you take the bigger number <laughs> and you subtract the smaller number. So using these, E is 5. So for this one, you would have 5, and you would subtract 2 from it, giving you a length of 3. Look at that. In AT, the bigger number is 1. You would subtract negative 2. Well, two negative numbers next to each other, negative minus a negative becomes positive, so that's 3. And last but not least, ty you have a negative 2 which is the bigger number minus a negative 5 click click once again and you get 3 so the rule that you need to remember to find the length of a number on a number line is the bigger number subtract the smaller number now that we know they all have the same length we go on to this idea that two segments are congruent if and only if their lengths are the same they, they have to be congruent so when we look at this, it says which segments above are congruent to ZC? Well, ZC goes from 3 to negative 6. So that has a length of 3 minus negative 6. So that is 9, has a length of 9. What other ones have a length of 9? Well, you can kind of look at it and say, okay, well, if I shift one this way, I could shift one that way. So YD should have a length of 9. And if I shift one more, XE would have a length of 9, and they would all be congruent. We're going to switch gears and talk about the idea of collinear. A set of points uh, are collinear if and only if they lie on the same line. Otherwise, they are called non-collinear. The non meaning not part. A picture of that would be if I have a line here, let's say this is DE, and then point F here would be non-collinear because it's not on the point. Now point G would be collinear because it's on D, G, E. To switch gears even one more time, let's talk about midpoint. P is the midpoint of FG if and only if F, P, and P, G are congruent. So let's draw ourselves a picture. We have a picture. We have F and G. P would be the midpoint, so it has to be right in the middle. And you can't guess that it's in the middle. You have to know it's right in the middle, meaning that these two pieces, this piece and this piece, are congruent, designated by the markings that I just drew on the line. So that would mean that this is the midpoint because it's right directly in the middle. So above, find the midpoint of UA. All right, well, let's scroll back up. UA. UA is right here. It goes from 1 to negative 3. So we can skip over. We could go over 1, 2. I'm at negative 1. If I go from U, 1, 2, negative 1. N is the midpoint at negative 1. Now for the midpoint of AD, let's scroll up. 
AD goes from here to here. If we go over 1, we're at B. If we go over 1, we're at C. There's no number in between there, so it's right in the middle here. So we would be at 2.5, and there would be no letter for that. So that you can't give a letter, you would give 2.5. Well, how do you figure that out without having um, a number line? Well, what you would do here is you would find the average of the two. So to find the length of UA, you can take the two numbers. A was at 1. You could add the negative 3 to it, and then you could divide by 2. So 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2 divided by 2, giving you negative 1, which is where it was located at N. So the midpoint formula is you take the two numbers, first number, add the second number, and then divide by 2 for the midpoint. Now let's go into the examples. In example 1, we want to find x and the length of AB. Well, looking at the picture, we know that A, Y, and B are collinear because they're on the same line. Y is the midpoint because A, Y, and Y, B are marked being congruent to each other. So if we take our example and we say, okay, well, 3x minus 7, that is what ay is, and yb over here is 5x minus 25, well, what we can do is say, ooh, they are congruent to each other, so we can set 3x minus 7 equal to 5x minus 25 and solve for x. Minus the 3x over. At the same time, you can move the 25, adding it to the opposite side, giving you that 18 is equal to 2x, so x equals 9. Part of it is done. We want to find the length of AB. Well, finding the length of AB, you know that it's the whole thing. We can plug it back in and say, okay, 3 times 9 minus 7, well, that's 20. And if that's a y, y b has to be the same, so a b equals 40. And we're done with example 1. Now for example 2, we want to find the length of r t. Well, once again, we still need to get x. Same idea, r is in the middle because q r and r t are congruent to each other by the markings. So we let's mark our picture. So qr is 2x plus 4, but this time they gave you qt. They gave you the whole thing, which is 8x minus 12. Well, now this isn't the same as example 1. We can't set these two equal to each other. This is 2 of one of these. So what you can do is you can say, wait, if this is 2x plus 4, set this equal to 2x plus 4, and now you can solve it. So we have 2x plus 4 plus 2x plus 4, set it equal to 8x minus 12. Simplify, 4x plus 8 is equal to 8x minus 12. Subtract the 4x over, add 12 the opposite way. 20 is equal to 4x. So x ends up equaling 5 when you divide. And now we can get the length of rt because rt is 2x plus 4 because we know it's the same as qr. So 2 times the 5 plus the 4, rt equals 14. Example 3. Let's draw a picture to help us out. Coordinate w is at negative 6. So we'll put w. That's at negative 6. N, W equals 5. So find the possible coordinates for N. Well, N could either be to the right, or N could be to the left. And we know that N, W is 5, so all we have to do is add 5 to negative 6. If we add 5 to negative 6, we're at negative 1. Or if we add 5 to negative 6, but it's in the negative direction, would be at negative 11. So n could either be at negative 11 
or negative 1. All right, example 4, coordinate y is at 19. So y is over here at 19. f is over here. At 7, we want to find the midpoint. Where is the middle located? We'll call it M. Well, if from previous, instead of counting over each way, we can sit here and we could say, okay, let's find the middle. So that would say, take one number, add the second number to it, and then divide by 2. Well, you get 26 divided by 2. So the midpoint has to be at 13. We're going to finish this lesson by solving simple equations. So the first one, we're going to distribute the 5. So we get 3x plus 5x plus 30 equal to 54 plus 16x minus 56. Simplify both sides. So this side becomes 8x plus 30. Over here, we get 16x and negative 2. We'll minus the 8x over. At the same time, we'll add the 2. So 32 is equal to 8x. So x ends up equaling 4. Example 6, you have to distribute a negative 3. So the 9 just comes down. It becomes a negative 3x minus 15 equal to 4 comes down, a negative 1 is being distributed, so it becomes negative 3x minus 10. Simplify both sides. This side becomes negative 3x minus 6, which is equal to over here, negative 3x, 4 and negative 10 make negative 6. Well, both sides are the same. So if I add 3x over, and then I add 6 to complete this way, everything cancels out, so we have infinitely many solutions. And you knew this when both sides were equal to each other in the beginning. So all the variables you choose for x would work. In example 7, if you're solving an equation like this, you need a common denominator. Well, 4, 6, and 2 all have a common denominator of 12. So then you multiply each piece. How does 4 become 12? Multiply this by 3. How does 6 become 12? Multiply by 2. And how does 2 become 12? Multiply by 6. So this becomes 3x. There's a minus sign there. That becomes 10. And 1 times 6 is 6. Now we can solve it. Add 10 over. 3x is equal to 16 divided by 3. x equals 16 over 3 for your answer. Example 8. Let's distribute the negative 2. So 5x comes down. We get a negative 2x squared. We get a plus 8. Negative times negative is become positive. We're going to distribute the x. We get negative 2x squared. And then we're going to be minusing 6 x here. Let's get everything to one side. So let's get move this x squared over to this x squared. And wait a second. Look at that. They both cancel out. So we don't have to worry about an x squared anymore. So we have 5x plus 8 equals negative 6. Well, let's bring the x this way. So we'll minus 5x over 8 equals negative 11x. Divide by a negative 11. x equals negative 8 over 11 for our answer. Finishing up, we're going to solve for y in this example. So what do we notice? We can minus the t over to the other side. So we get 3m plus ym equals v minus t. We want to get solve for y, so we can minus the 3m over also. So we get ym is equal to v minus t minus 3m, y by itself, divided by m. So y is equal to, in our case, v minus t minus 3m over m, and we solved for it. 
in example 10, we want m. Ooh, m is on two variables. So here, we have to take this idea of back distributing. They both have an m in common. So if I can pull an m out of both of them, I'm left with 3 plus y, which is equal to v minus t. Well, I want m, so i got to get rid of this combination now. So I'm just going to divide by 3 plus y. Cancels that out, 3 plus y over here. So m is equal to v minus t over 3 plus y. And we are done with lesson 1.2, day one.